PHL 17 presents In Focus, a look at the issues affecting the Philadelphia region. Now your host, Steve Highsmith. Different looks and languages, different religious beliefs and customs can be confusing, even threatening to some people, but these differences also can be enlightening, invigorating, exciting, entertaining, even tasty. One organization has been working for more than a decade now in the Philadelphia region to improve understanding and appreciation of Arab culture. Good morning, I'm Steve Highsmith and welcome to In Focus. With me now is Azami Sayed, founder and executive director of Al Bustan Seeds of Culture. Al Bustan is Arabic for the garden. What are you growing in your garden, Hazami? We're growing uh, the seeds and planting the seeds of Arab culture. We have kids engaged in art, music, dance, in a friendly and fun educational environment. Now the Arab culture is one that is widespread geographically. It's very diverse. There are different nations involved. How do you process, how do you approach this? Well, we bring uh, kids around uh, the common language, which Arabic, the, uh, the language is what unites these 22 Arab countries. So a large focus of our programs are teaching the language through the arts. And this teaching of the language through the arts, which arts are we talking about primarily? We teach um, visual art, music, which includes um, percussion and singing. We teach folk dance. Um, drama, poetry, uh, as well as actually some science um, f uh, for the, during the summertime, and then video making for the teenagers also during the summertime. And who is the audience in this? Who are you trying to reach? Our actually um, targeted audience is quite diverse. We want to reach both the youth and families in the Arab American community, as well as uh, the non-Arab community. So really, our programs are open to uh, youth and adults of all uh, backgrounds, all socioeconomic, religious, uh, and ethni ethnic backgrounds. You recently celebrated your 10th anniversary, and over the course of the last year, you put mm -hmm. on a number of concerts. We've got some footage where we can show folks some of what is seen, at least on a larger scale, not the classroom sure. setting that begins in the classroom, but then you'll see some other aspects of the production that goes on. What are we seeing typically? Well, we're seeing um, a presenting uh, arm of our organization, which has grown to include a concert series. Uh, so we bring guest artists, renowned uh, artists from around the world, as well as within America, to uh, present a concert with our resident uh, music ensemble. They also do workshops and residencies in the community, so for youth uh, uh, in schools, as well as for college students. Um, they're also uh, sharing their repertoire and teaching uh, and performing with some of these uh, students. And what would you describe, or how would you describe the status of Arab American cultural identity right now, generally in, in the country? Sure. Well, it's very diverse. It's hard to sort of in encapsulate it in one or two sentences, and it does vary on people's um, backgrounds, where they're coming from, whether they're recent immigrants or whether they've been here, you know, for decades and more assimilated, or whether they, you know, came, uh, whether they were born here or came, um, their parents arrived for college and, you know, now have, um, have, have, stu have their kids born here. But generally, it's, um, it's a community that is searching and navigating its place, particularly with youth that we work with, um, but exploring their identity, learning about their heritage, and finding their place in American society. So what Al Bustan Seeds d does is it tries to celebrate that culture. Certainly. To remind, I guess, of that culture, and also explain the culture to those maybe who are not familiar with it. Yeah, I mean, also, but definitely to teach it in a structured setting. I mean, even if kids grow up in an Arab household, they may not have stu have an opportunity, uh, typically won't uh, have an opportunity to study the music and understand uh, uh, the structure of the, melod uh, of the melody, of the rhythm, and lear learn about certain historical uh, uh, moments and key figures and in Arab history. And so we do that in structured settings, but also in a fun and educational way so that kids of Arab heritage can gain something and, le and learn uh, more about their own heritage and have a way to then, you know, see where they are and understand where they are relative to that and make their own culture. We view um, culture as a very dynamic thing. So the kids are learning about uh, a certain time period and place, whether it's historic or contemporary, but they're also actively making their own uh, culture here in, in America. And where do you do this? 
Well, we started off at summer camp. So um, in July 2002, we started with uh, Al Bustan Camp. Um, it was held for first four years at Morris Arboretum, which is part of the University of Pennsylvania. And we had 18 kids to start. It was open kids of, of diverse backgrounds, uh, Arab and non-Arab. And we've since grown to have year-round programs uh, that are school-based, either in school or after school. So you work with the Philadelphia School District? Yes, definitely. We have several ongoing weekly and some daily programs in the School District of Philadelphia, as well as programs in um, the community. So there's currently a partnership with the University of Pennsylvania. We teach uh, our music ensemble class every Monday evening. And that's open to Penn students, but anybody in the community as well that wants to learn and um, Arabic music and, you know, play it, uh, learn it really through by playing and singing. Is this something that if I went to other major American cities I would find, or is this unique to Philadelphia? I think it's quite unique. I mean, uh, we are we have uh, partner uh, Arab arts organizations around the country, but there really isn't some uh, other organizations that do both the teaching and the presenting with the focus on the arts and culture in the same way that we do. Uh, so, so I think in that respect, yes, we are we are unique. After a decade, you have some track record. You have some sense of accomplishment. Do you have an idea what impact you've made on individuals or families or the community? Sure. Well, we definitely continually try to gauge that and get collect feedback, whether actively we ask for feedback at the end of each program, uh, but also anecdotally what people tell us. And so one example at camp, uh, we often hear, you know, parents telling us after kids have participated in our camp uh, for three weeks, they're eager to learn Arabic, say those of Arab heritage, they're eager to learn Arabic now, or they're more willing, if their parents are Arabic speakers, they're more willing to respond to them and have uh, in Arabic and, and have an interest. Or if they start, you know, go back to school that fall, they're often one of the first things they want to do is some, if, they, if they're given room to do an independent project, they'll pick something about their heritage and identity and they want to research it more and, you know, uh, delve into that and share it with their peers. Um, so we see that as a very positive thing. For kids of non-Arab heritage, um, we see them really being curious about the, about the culture and the language in particular, and um, many have actually gone on to study it formally, whether at school or in college, uh, and come back as counselors, actually want to come back and, and, and be mentors to the young ones as well. Are there stereotypes that you try to break down in, in the course of this teaching? Certainly. <laughs> I mean, uh, in, in, in everything we do, it's, it's trying to give voice to the youth and in, in individuals that are uh, that are participating, um, both to understand uh, Arab culture um, in and of itself, and not have to see it in this framework, in this lens that we often see in mainstream media, that is often negative or seen in times in a context of conflict. Well, let's so, be blunt about what the last forty years have been like. There are two dominant images: one of oil, and the other being of nine eleven and of yeah. terrorism. And so you obviously hold your classes knowing that this environment exists out there. How right. do you deal with that? How do you approach it? Yeah. Well, we very much want to give um, people uh, uh, a way to access so much richness and history and, and, um, and, and current uh, things happening in the Arab world and in America, in the Arab American community, but giving them the tools to understand and appreciate uh, what else, you know, <laughs> historically and currently there is uh, to, to learn, because often there is misconception, misconceptions or misunderstanding or really just lack of information or very limited uh, understanding. So we really want, we through our structured programs, whether at camp or in the schools, we, we teach that sort of history and culture. And it's often a starting point as well. So like when at Northeast High School we're teaching about Arab poets and authors, um, that's a launch for them, uh, for students, because it's at a school like Northeast, the kids come from all over the world, in mm -hmm. fact. You go uh, into the cafeteria there, you see flags all around from it's all like the countries. It's like a mini UN. Countries. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then that's a starting point for those kids, whether they're from Vietnam or Bangladesh or uh, Dominican Republic, to then reflect on their own uh, identity and culture and heritage and, and go back and interview their own parents and grandparents and learn something about them. And sort of that, in that sense, we are encur we're, we're encouraging kids both to understand their own heritage and to be critical thinkers and think about the media and the world around them, but and then also be active producers in creating something, in using the arts as a form of self-expression, so whether through video or poetry. 
Obviously, through the school system, they can access your programs, but if people outside the school system wanted to do so, how could they get in touch with you? Certainly. They can... Um, Go on to our website. We have actually a wealth of information on our website. We also actually have a, a digital education website. It's obastanseeds.org forward slash digital. And it's a series of educational resources that we've developed that are open to, we hope educators would use in the classroom. There's some lesson plans in there, but also anybody interested to learn more. Um, there's, there's a lot of information. And as well, we, uh, we, we invite people to come to our concerts. Uh, we just finished our second concert series season that was held in uh, so Trinity Center. We'll talk more about this in a moment. And of sure. course, we'll give the website more with Azami in a few minutes. But next, we hear from two teachers and artists reaching new understandings through music and the visual arts ahead on In Focus on PHL 17. We're back on In Focus. I'm Steve Highsmith as we explore Albastan Seeds of Culture, a cultural appreciation and community outreach organization in Philadelphia focusing on Arab culture. And with me now are Hafez Al Ali Katain and Tremaine Smith. Now, Tremaine is a visual artist and teacher, and Hafez is a percussionist and a teacher. Thank you both for being here. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you for having us. Tremaine, uh, what do you try to teach uh, through what this artistic expression? Well, as an artist, I'm always seeking to empower others through their own creativity. The beauty of Al Bustan is that added to that is culture and language. And so it is a, a way in to the language of art, which has its own language. And I zoom in on that always in teaching students, the, the, the language of visual arts, line, shape, color, form, texture, all of that. But the context with Al Bustan is with the Arabic language, which in itself holds extraordinary beauty, the fluidity, um, and then Arabic art, which is more geometric and hard-edged, and the combined with the fluidity of the language, there's calligraphy in Arabic art. You've got a really beautiful contrast um, with that. I myself have been educated by teaching through Abustan about Arab Islamic art and find it extremely beautiful, um, embodying harmony, you know, an aesthetic of great unity and yet diversity within unity. So there's a mm. lot, um, re repeating patterns, expanding patterns um, that were reminiscent of the expansion of the universe. You know, um, how we can go into something and keep on going like infinity. Um, mm. I'm always interested in the spiritual aspects of what lines and shapes and colors can bring to our experience. I feel like I'm in a master's class already. <laughs> <laughs> Hafez, is, uh, how do you approach this uh, expression in the context of trying to teach about Arab culture? Well, uh, I teach uh, through my instruments, basically. Um, um, I love teaching. And with Al Bustan, I have this uh, huge opening door to meet with the kids and the uh, adults as well. And the camp, specifically, we have from third uh, uh, grades up to the sixth grade and I really want my instrument to continue I want not only Arabs to play uh, Arabic rhythms and Arabic instrument I would love for everybody to use it specifically these two I will talk to them uh, after about it uh, I want everybody to play it uh, and really uh, I want them to know more about our culture through my instruments because it's a beautiful culture. Well, you both are accomplished artists in yes. your own right, um, separate from your involvement with Al Bustan. And as a percussionist, you, you're noted. And so uh, it's an honor to, to meet you and to have you. you here. Thank you. Now, while you pick up at least the Dumbek, Tremaine, quickly, as we, I think we have mm -hmm. a little bit of video of what goes on both in the classroom and in the concert setting. Uh, visually, uh, do you start out, say, at the camp at the same level uh, with the kids at the same time, or do you base it on themes? How do you go about it? Yeah, I work with each student according to the age group. I, I teach the younger students up through the teens. Um, and there is a theme each mm. year in camp, which I love because it's a way in as a teacher to then al align all my lessons according to this overall theme. Um, there was one year that we looked at 
children's books made by an Arabic author, and she took the language, the Arabic alphabet, and would make wonderful illustrations, very creative, very original. And each year we produce a piece of artwork around the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet. Mm -hmm. And each student sort of develops their own relationship with these letters. Maybe they pick one letter. Maybe it's the beginning of their name. Or maybe they just like the shape of the letter. Mm -hmm. And we work with it again and again with collage, with printmaking, painting, drawing. So there's, um, and, and it's been a quilt oftentimes. There's 28 letters. So we figure out how to mm -hmm. produce that in a very beautiful mm -hmm. piece. Um, each year using color and shape and well your own artistic style you use heat yes <laughs> yes do you use that also in in this i have taught all ages my process which is called encaustic it uses hot beeswax and it does use heat it uses it uses fire and it's wax and i could do it it would be possible to do it at camp i've done it with abu stan in workshops mm -hmm. before um mm -hmm. using the arabic Alpha, alphabet and using templates of the letters and repeating them. There's a lot of texture to using wax. It can build up. Mm -hmm. My work in s myself in my studio has been very influenced by teaching mm. um, Arabic art. I have become, my work has become much more geometric. Um, mm. The teaching always is symbiotic with my own process. Mm. So I can't help but be influenced and then take that back, what I've learned, into my teaching. But the repeating patterns and the grids um, have found their way very much into my work. Well, now a man who definitely walks to a beat of his own drum. <laughs> I would call that a drum, but it's the dumbak, right? That's the dumbak, that's correct. We call it as well uh, derbaki or tabli, mm -hmm. and it keeps on going. Depends the country where you are. Now, uh, what is the outside of that? Maybe? Well, this is, we call it sadaf in Arabic. It's uh, mother of pearl. It's beautiful. Yes, and it's made in Egypt, this particular one, Jawaharat al Fan and the skin or the head is synthetic. Mm -hmm. It comes plastic as well. And is it hollow all the way through inside? Yes, inside? this is aluminum actually, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, painted, glued, then they put each one actually handmade. So here you go with the art. <laughs> what is a typical rhythm if there is such a thing as a typical rhythm? Well, the easiest one um, I always teach is the laf or malfouf, which mm -hmm. is in two four. And uh, basically what, when I teach, I just go with the right hand first. Mm -hmm. Again, I to mention that dum is the basic sound, which is, mm -hmm. and the tack is the sharp one we play at the edge, hmm. and the rest we fill in it with what I call specifically tika. So this is the rhythm with one hand. Then I introduce the rest to fill in with the left. With experience, you get to. So from the basic, you went. I think it's more than experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's talent also. But all right, Thank so you. sign me up for camp. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. I may have to be, go to remedial camp, though, for a long time. What, yes. um, th this is a joyous instrument. Yeah, uh, this is, uh, I call it my baby, believe mm. it or not. I love it. And um, it's been almost uh, more than 20 some years mm. playing it. And every day I learn something new. And this is what I love to teach others to continue and they will get to teach others as well. When you teach all the kids, this yes. for example, what do you get out of that? Uh, happiness. Mm. I, I, it's, it's happiness. I enjoy each moment from it. Mm. Uh, just watching the kids, uh, how to hold the drum, and uh, you could see they just want to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they just want to touch the drum and play, and it goes as well for singing or dancing or art, but in specifically the instrument, they love drumming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They enjoy anything of it. Uh, and they smart. Kids learn fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and I learn a lot from them as well. What yeah. role does this play in Arab culture? Uh, this is very important. It comes from rhythm and generally, uh, it, it, you go from meditation to, to, to prayers, to weddings, uh, and it keeps on going the list. Um, the role is very important. Uh, believe it or not, even it's not a melodic instrument, mm -hmm. but if you, you could feel the classical rhythm from the folkloric rhythm to a sad beat or drum solo that I'm playing, or sad part to a happy part. Mm -hmm. And it's a very important role in these occasions. Like, you name it, uh, in weddings, there is specific rhythms such as this one. We call it zaffa. 
So that right there, it's happiness. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. show us what this is now. Someone oh, might this say, is well, a, it looks like a tambourine, but it's the rick. It, it is from the tambourine family, mm -hmm. actually, correct? Uh, this is a rick. Uh, some uh, countries, Arabic countries, they call it daf or duf as well. Now, this is specifically for classical Arabic music, but I could use it in, uh, in the same rhythm, and it will, the difference that I have the zils or the jungles in here, yeah, there is four in each hole, and there is five. Mm -hmm. And the same notes, the dum, the tak, and the rest, I fill in with the tikka. But let's play the left beat, if you remember, the mm -hmm. dum, tak, tak, dum, tak. Now I'm going to use the, the zills, or oh, it keeps going. So this is basically for classical. Wow. So here is a rhythm I want to show you. It's very famous Samai. It's in a 10-8, mm -hmm. uh, 10 uh, notes in the major, and very classical Arabic music, and everybody know it. Uh, it's, it goes like that. So basically, if I count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah. obviously, another master class here. Thank, <laughs> thank you both for taking time to thank talk you about your us. own artistic backgrounds to some degree, and also to your involvement with Alpustan. And we're going to continue in just a moment with a very happy camper as well as Hazami. Again, yes. more on In Focus in just a moment. Stay tuned. Thank you. Great. In Focus continues on PHL 17. Alpistan reaches out to young people from elementary school through high school and to the wider community. Back with me is Azami Sayed, founder and executive director of Alpistan Seeds of Culture. And joining us is Giamesu Da Silva, who's been going to Alpistan summer camp for several years. You a happy camper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you like about camp? I like everything about Alpistan. I love seeing all my friends and I love the music and the art and I really, really love the Arabic language and Arabic classes. Now you told me you came to this not as someone from an Arab culture or Arab ethnicity and background, but that you were just interested in it. And so you, you love it. You love what, the sound of it, the look of the letters and what, what, did you, what drew you to it? The Arabic language, it's just a very flowy language and it's like artwork when you write it and when you read it and when you just look at it it's really really beautiful and the sound of it is just amazing and it's a really really beautiful language. Now you've been going since you were what seven years old? Yes. When you're in eighth grade now? So are you looking at this and, and seeing that you've changed in some way as a result of learning about this, being exposed to a different culture? Yes, actually I have because I feel like this camp and learning about Arab culture and the Arab language, I feel like I've been able to battle a lot of the stereotypes that you come across uh, being in middle school and hearing a lot of these things that have been going on and all of the anti-Arab messages that you get. I feel like I myself have been able to battle that and speak against that because I know about it because of Albastan. Yeah. Uh, Azami, you look at culture as something that is not static, it's mm -hmm. changing. How do you approach that when you're using either, you know, being at camp or whether you're working throughout the year in Albastan to try to teach about Arab culture? It's not something that is stuck in time. Right. So we want kids to feel that they're part of making culture. So when they create a video that speaks to some issue that they are struggling with or uh, uh, you know, m making sense of, then to that artistic expression that they create is also a very current contemporary culture that um, we want to share and both give, the, you know, give them the forum and space to do that and also uh, find a way to make more people aware of it and be able to 
uh, experience that, what the kids themselves are, are creating. So it's both an affirmation of culture, but you're also trying to do it in the context of the broader community? Certainly. And when you hear Kia say, for example, that she's learned all of this and represents the truth in a community um, that maybe has not always been represented, particularly in fearful times, how does that make you feel? Well, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear and gratified that they're, that that these things are resonating with somebody. I mean, I, I, I uh, can see that in, in Kia, knowing her over the years and seeing her growth and, um, you know, embracing uh, these cultural experiences, learning from them and sort of maturing and how, you know, she's attending a, uh, an immersion program this summer uh, in Arabic language across, across the country in California. And I think that's fantastic that she's vested and we pl I think we planted a seed of interest in the language and now she's been able to pursue it in an academic way as well. Do you see yourself taking this to college and actually exploring it? Definitely. I really want to continue my study of Arabic and really master the language. I think it would be great. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us. And thank you, Hazami, and thank, thank you, you for starting uh, Al Bastan more than 10 years ago now. Thank, thank you. you so we'll much. talk to you again. Thank you. And that's in focus for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Steve Highsmith. Enjoy your weekend and have a great week ahead.